Make certain your lesson is set on full screen. You will need to press pause when an instruction is given. This poem is called A Dreary Day. Begin by looking at what you are being asked to write about. This prompt says, Read the poem A Dreary Day. Now use the events that occurred in this poem in the form of a story. Write a story that retells the sequence of events from the poem. Use fluffy flowery words to convey experiences and events. You may make up additional events to complete the story. A Dreary Day I grumbled to my mom, the sky is gray. There was nothing to do and nothing to play. I walked outside with a great big yawn. Then I saw it. My brother was in the pond. The look on my face was joy and delight. I went running toward him as he gave a yell in fright. I rushed in the pond and held out my hand. He pulled with his might until he was able to stand. We looked at each other and gave a big laugh. We knew the day would be different than the first half. Splashing and swimming on this dreary day, it was fun in that pond with nothing left to say. After reading, you always return to the prompt and analyze it. Read the poem A Dreary Day. Use the events that occurred in this poem in the form of the story. So what they're asking you to do is take the poem and instead of writing it rhyming and writing it like a poem, you're writing what happened in the poem but you're telling it like a story, not like a poem. Write a story that retells the sequence of events. So you want to make sure sequence of events. That means you are telling the things that happened in the poem. You will be telling them in the same order in your story. Use fluffy flowery words. This is descriptive language for your experiences. You may make up additional events to complete the story. So this is saying that as long as you use all the things that happened in that poem in your story, you can make up other things that go along with the events that are happening. Let's fill in your plan. Next to one is weather, then where. Where are these boys in the story? Well, in the story, they're at their house, and then they're going to go to the pond. So the main character, the first boy, is starting out at home. So write, home now. What is the boy doing at the beginning of the story? He's bored and he's complaining about the fact that he's bored. So write bored next to doing now. Number two, prompt. This prompt says to write the sequence of events. So the first thing that happened was his brother fell in the pond. Fill in your two now. 3. What was the next thing that happened? This was the climax. The boys played in the pond. Fill in your 3 now. 4. The ending of this story, I'm going to make up and say that they went in for dinner. How would you like your story to end? It's up to you. Did the boys go in and clean off? Did they maybe make a fl raft for the pond? Give some kind of an ending to make me feel like this story is complete. Fill in your ending now. It's time to begin your writing. Next to number one, you're going to start off with the weather. I've written, the day was dreary as gray skies hung over my house. The title of this poem is A Dreary Day. So that's kind of letting you know what the weather is like. It's setting that tone. So when you're describing the weather, maybe clouds filled the sky and you, the sun could not be seen. It says the sky is gray. You can't say it was a beautiful sunny day. You have to stick with the information that was in the poem. On your paper, please indent and write your weather sentence now. Next is where. The person who's telling this story, where are they? I put at home. This poem uses the first person. I grumbled to my mom. I walked outside. The boy in this story is the one that's talking, so I chose to do the same in my story. The prompt did not tell you that you had to use I. If you want to give the boy a name, you have a little bit of freedom here. I chose to stick with the first person. I put where I was along with my weather. I put hung over my house. 
Go ahead and write a sentence letting the reader know where you were or where the character was now. This paragraph is going to be finished off with telling what the character or what you, if you're pretending you're the character, were doing at the beginning of the story. I put that I was bored. I was inside eating a sandwich at the table as I complained to my mom about being bored. I had organized my room, read a book, and then it felt as if there were nothing to do. I finished my lunch and placed my plate in the sink. So notice, yes, in the poem the boy told his mom he was bored, but the rest of the details I made up. Finish this paragraph by telling what you were doing, if you're pretending you're the boy, or what the boy was doing at the beginning of the story when he was bored now. Going back to the plan, number two, brother fell in the pond. Here's what I've written. I opened the back door and went down the old wooden steps. When I reached the bottom, I heard a scream. My head turned toward the pond as I saw my brother fall in. Running as quickly as my feet could carry me, I raced to the pond. My brother's arms were flapping about in fear. With no time to take off my shoes, I rushed into the water and extended my hand. I pulled him to his feet. I retold what happened in the poem in the form of a story, and then I added some of my own specific details. Next is the climax. This is where they play in the pond. He looked at me, and we both roared with laughter. We began splashing each other, and before long, we had invented a new game in the pond. The two of us spent the entire afternoon playing in the water, having more fun than we could have imagined. Now, end story. We're going to go in for dinner. When my mom called us in for dinner, we were dripping wet. We quickly changed before taking our places at the table. When Dad came in, we couldn't wait to tell him about our fun time playing in the pond. Now, before you finish, remember you were given some options. I wrote my story in the first person. I said I, just like the poem did. You can also give a name for this character and tell it in the third person. You know, Brian did this or Fred did that. This prompt gave you freedom there. It did not tell you exactly what you had to do. What it did tell you is you have to retell the sequence of events in the poem in the form of a story. You've put your weather on, you've told where you were and what you were doing. Make certain you're staying in the past tense. You're pretending this already happened. Now, your next paragraph, you're going to tell that brother fell in the pond. Then your third paragraph, you played in the pond or he played in the pond. And then you're going to write whatever you came up with for your ending. Do a great job.